In Book 2, Chapter 3, Smith lays out his theory of productive versus unproductive labor. The chapter is called Of the Accumulation of Capital, or of Productive and Unproductive Labor. Sometimes this distinction is raised as productive versus unproductive consumption, but we'll be looking at the same set of issues. And for Smith, the key distinction is, does a given act of labor or spending fix or realize itself in any permanent flow of services, looking forward? For Smith, for instance, spending money on a waiter or personal servant is unproductive labor, once you've spent the money and consumed the food or drink you were brought, you don't have anything left in return. Smith argues that opera singers are also unproductive labor. The same can be said of clergy or also national defense. Smith stresses that unproductive labor may well be necessary, but still, once you've made the expenditure, you're not left with any capital investment which is enduring. Productive labor, in contrast, replaces and extends its value, at least if the act of production is successful. So Smith gives here manufacturers as a classic example of productive labor. After you have built something and invested in, say, a factory or a machine, you produce something, but you still have capital left, and ideally the profits from your enterprise will help you replenish and indeed extend the value of that capital. At the national or regional level, Smith draws a repeated distinction between opulence and idleness. Opulence results to the extent that an economy invests in productive labor. To the extent an economy invests in unproductive labor, we are left with idleness. Smith repeatedly presents this distinction as an important cause of the wealth and poverty of nations. Smith doesn't worry too much about excess consumption from particular individuals because he sees this can be cancelled out by the productive efforts of others. It's the kings and ministers he worries about working through government, and he calls them, quote, the greatest spendthrifts in society. And here's a very nice quotation toward the end of this book, and I quote, The uniform, constant, and uninterrupted effort of every man to better his condition the principle from which public and national, as well as private opulence, is originally derived, is frequently powerful enough to maintain the natural progress of things toward improvement, in spite both of the extravagance of government and of the greatest errors of administration. End quote. In a private letter, but not in The Wealth of Nations, Smith once wrote, There is a great deal of ruin in a nation. This chapter on productive and unproductive labor is a very important part of Smith's general approach to the wealth of nations.